Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back to do another how to play video. And in this one, we'll be talking about the lovely lady that is behind me here, Lethe. As with all of my how to play videos, I'll be covering almost everything you could want to know about the character, including things like stats, skills, possible endgame equipment builds for you to try out, matchup knowledge, if that's your thing. And for those of you that really enjoy it, voice actor trivia as well. If you do enjoy this style of content, as always, consider leaving it a like or subscribing to my channel. It does help me out here a ton. And if you think it'll help out a friend or guildmate, make sure you share it with them as well. With the introduction out of the way, let's talk about Lethe's stats. Lethe is an ice warrior of the Aquarius Zodiac symbol. She shares a stat line with Conqueror Aloyas. She has 885 attack, 613 defense, 6,149 health, 121 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 18 starting effectiveness, no starting effect resistance, and 3% starting dual attack chance. This is low attack for a warrior, but we don't really care, as you'll find out in the next section, that this is a health scaling hero. She also has average defense and health, if not slightly below average when it comes to those stats. The biggest standout for Lethe's stat pool is, of course, the 121 base speed, making her the fastest warrior in all of Epic 7. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic 7, Lethe is voiced by Sandra Saad, who you may recognize as the voice of Researcher Carrot, as well as Cirilla. She's also the girl that believes in us, the PvE goddess herself, Tamarin. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, Lethe is voiced by a legend of the industry in Hoko Kuwashima. You may recognize her as your first anime crush as Sango from Inuyasha. She also appears as Captain Soifan in the currently airing Bleach the Thousand Year Blood War. You can also hear her as the voice of Kasumi from the Dead or Alive franchise and one of my personal favorites, Android 21, from the Dragon Ball franchise. You're giving me a headache. In order to understand how this character works, we first have to talk about Lethe's S2 passive, Dreamer in the Deep. The first soul burn that Lethe uses in a match does not cost any souls, so essentially it's free. Whenever Lethe attacks a target, there is a 75 to 100% chance, depending on Malagora, to inflict one omen on the target, regardless of whether the attack hits. Omen is a unique debuff that is unaffected by effect resistance, it cannot be dispelled, it cannot be transferred, and it goes through immunity stacks. Omen doesn't really have any functions, it's basically just a placeholder for her skill 1, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. Additionally, you cannot give Omen through counterattacks, dual attacks, or extra attacks. Lethe's S3 is Freeze Over. You acquire 3 souls upon use, and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Mulligora. This is an AoE attack with a 1x attack multiplier. It decreases buff durations by one turn before there is a 75 to 100% chance, depending on Malagora, to inflict frostbite and restrict on all enemies for two turns. If you are unfamiliar with the frostbite debuff, that's fine. Only one other character thus far has had it in Epic 7, and that character is not commonly played. Frostbite is a debuff that says that you cannot be the subject to any damage reduction or damage sharing effects. Essentially, it turns off most of the damage mitigation sources in the game, such as the Escort buff, the Aureus artifact, the Adamant Shield artifact, and various hero skills that reduce the actual damage that those heroes would take from skills. Lethe's Soul Burn is notable that we have to talk about it because 1. It's free, so you can use it right away. And two, it is core to setting up her skill one, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Because you get a free soul burn at the start, and the fact that it grants an extra turn, it is quite powerful. You can use the soul burn at the start of the match to use freeze over to remove immunity buffs from the enemy team, and then frostbite and restrict them to set up some very aggressive plays, and then take an extra turn and go right into her skill one, wave slash, which we'll be talking about in just a moment. The other use for it is to use wave slash at the start, and then hold it for later on in a game. You can run, but you can't hide. I'll take care of it myself. Lethe's skill one is her signature skill, Wave Slash. It has a 1x attack multiplier. It grants a speed buff to Lethe for one turn. What a waste of time. The second component of Wave Slash is Call of the Abyss. 
After Lethe attacks a target, if their omen count is 3, she will use the extra attack Call of the Abyss. It's a single target extra attack with a 0.3x attack multiplier, as well as a 22% max health multiplier. This skill cannot trigger a critical hit and ignores 100% of the target's defense. Additionally, this skill has an unusually high PAL multiplier of 1.3, meaning that the damage is actually quite a bit higher than the standard multiplier would normally suggest. If Call of the Abyss does kill the target, it inflicts extinction on that target and then heals Lethe and the rest of her team for 20% of the extincted target's maximum health. I called this move the signature skill because Call of the Abyss is pretty much the standout damaging skill in the kit. It has a very high 22% max health multiplier, it has an unusually high 1.3 PAL multiplier, and it ignores the enemy's defense. When you compare that to Wave Slash, which just has average attack multipliers, and Freeze Over, which again has average attack multipliers, it's pretty obvious that this is the best skill in the kit. And considering it can't land a critical hit, and it scales entirely off of Lethe's max health, we're probably not going to be building critical hit chance, critical hit damage, or attack percentage at all on this character. And since you cannot proc omens off of dual attacks, extra attacks, or counter attacks, you could pretty much rule out the counter set, as well as the unity set on this character entirely. Let's take a quick look at Lethe's damage numbers using this table that I'll put up on your screen now. So if we look at the health values for Lethe here on the left, 6,149 is her max health at level 60 with nothing on. 8,984 is her max health at level 60 with just a helmet with no other HP subs at all on any of the other pieces. 9,686 is again I-90 helmet level 60, but now with the recommended artifact in the mix, which is Prayer of Solitude, not actually counting the bonus health that you receive from the artifact. And then after that, it just kind of scales between 12,000, 14K, 16K, so on and so forth. And as you can see, once you get up towards the 20K range, the mid 20s, high 20s, that's enough damage to outright kill most non-bruiser characters in the game. And considering that you can still call the Abyss people even if they dodge, it can outright kill really squishy characters like Savior Auden, for example. It's quite a bit of damage. And that's before we look at Prayer of Solitude, which gives you not only a massive health boost, but a damage increase and an additional damage increase to Call of the Abyss. Make no mistake, Prayer of Solitude is most likely going to be the best option for this character and for the character build section. I'm going to assume that you have at least a plus 15 Prayer of Solitude, but I will try to talk about some alternatives if you were unfortunate enough to not actually acquire some form of this artifact. But when you start looking at just even with a Prayer of Solitude at plus 15, when we look at the mid 20k range, that's quite a lot of damage. That's 18 to 19k damage to a target which can pick off most bruisers and put a serious dent in most damage mitigation sources. And at plus 30, this thing just gets absolutely ludicrous. Again, you're looking at like 20k damage for like the mid 20k range. And if you get a truly tanky one over 30k range, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of damage. Even uh, some of the tankiest characters in the game will not survive that if they have some amount of damage on them. And this is all before we talk about the fact that, again, this character has Frostbite, so it's very easy for you to just shut off any damage mitigation sources and then just kill a character outright with Call of the Abyss. Before moving on to Mulligora priorities, I want to revisit the free Soulburn from Dreamer in the Deep. You don't necessarily need to use the free Soulburn at the start of a fight with Lethe, and this is something I feel a lot of players will overlook. Yes, it's cool that you can get Frostbite and remove Immunity buff at the start to play very aggressively, but there are a lot of cleansers in the format, at least as of the recording of this video. So another alternative way that you can use your free soul burn is to use a turn one wave slash to get the increased speed on Lethe, which will put her over 300 base speed most likely, which will allow you to lap back around to use your free soul burn on her second turn, nearly guaranteeing the frostbite on a key target and therefore allowing you to get a call of the abyss on said target without having to worry about any damage mitigation. So you have the ability to play this character as a very tanky bruiser assassin or as an opener. And we'll talk about the two different styles and their builds in the very next section.
When it comes to Mulligora priorities, you have to max Dreamer in the deep first. There's not really much else to say here. If you don't have a 100% chance to inflict Omen, then you don't get Call of the Abyss consistently, and therefore the character doesn't get to do her actual job. I guess unless you're playing her kind of as a cleave opener, but even then I would still max Dreamer in the deep first. After that, Freeze Over comes next for the cooldown reduction as well as the effect chance. You only really need to take it to plus four. And after that, it is Wave Slash. As far as I am aware, this damage increase only affects Wave Slash. It does not actually affect Call of the Abyss. Even if it does affect Call of the Abyss, and I am wrong in this regard, it's still more important to get the Omen maxed out as well as have the minus one turn cooldown on Freeze Over and guarantee that we get that Frostbite debuff. Normally, I don't make guides for heroes during the release window, and if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you probably know that. It takes me about six to eight hours to make a how to play video, and I don't want that work to go to waste. If I make a video too early on a character and their builds and their place in the meta shifts drastically, then the video very quickly becomes outdated, like with my first run through with how to play Apocalypse Robbie. I'm making an exception for this character, and it's largely because of the kit that we just talked about. Lethe's S2, Dreamer in the Deep, makes counter and unity set on her nearly worthless. Call of the Abyss being unable to crit throws critical hit chance and critical hit damage stats out the window. It also being a health scaling move when compared to her S1 and S3 being attack scaling moves, and those same moves having mediocre scaling means that the attack set is also pretty much pointless on her. So you can basically throw out the destruction set and the attack set. This leaves us with a character that really only wants the speed stat, health stat, defense stat, and based on how you choose to play her and what you actually want out of her, maybe effectiveness or effect resistance or possibly both. This means that for almost every build you could probably want to play on Lethe, it's going to end up being on a four-piece speed set or a four-piece revenge set. These two sets give you the most amount of raw stats on the character, given her restrictions. Speaking of the revenge set, in order to not have to do each build twice in this section, just assume that you can play revenge set for any of the builds that I'm going to be talking about, except for maybe the last one, which is kind of an opener or a bridge style. Just recognize that if you go on revenge set, you're probably going to be 10 to 15 speed slower on average than the numbers that I have in my calculations. So let's just jump into it and talk about the standard variation for Lethe before we explain the tweaks you can make to the character to diversify her playstyle. The standard variation is best used by starting the match with Wave Slash on a key target and then using the Free Soul Burn on Freeze Over on your second rotation to assassinate said target. Looking at the primary sets, we're going to be on speed with anything as an offset. The viable offsets for this character include the health set, defense set, hit set, resist set, and immunity set. Note that when we take a look at the desired stats, that the HP I am listing here is the HP you should see in the character menu, not the total that you will be seeing inside of the game. I am not applying the bonus HP that you get from Prayer of Solitude, so please keep that in mind. Taking a look at those desired stats, I have 1,605 attack. This is simply Lethe at level 60 with an I-90 sword with an artifact that is recommended, which of course is going to be Prayer of Solitude. Defense is 1,350. This is to give us a decent amount of effective HP when combined with the 24,000 recommended health. This is a lower end bulk stat in my opinion. Ideally, you would like to have about 1350 to 1400 defense with 26k or higher HP. If you can get that, you're going to have a far stronger Lethe than what I have here, which is about 24k. I don't think I would go too much lower than 24k on Lethe in terms of HP. I think 24 is really like the low end of where you want to be for like the mid speed Lethe build, which is what this standard variation is. Speed is 230. Realistically, you want 240 or 245, or if you can really push it, 250. 240 is pretty much the accepted average that I've seen from a lot of the higher end tiered players in this game with her. 240 is, I think, really where you want to be. I went with 230 because when 
asking other people that I know that are somewhat around the master or challenger level, they really struggle to get Lethe too much faster than 230 speed while maintaining the level of bulk that I have here. So with most of my how to play videos, as you may know, I try to go lower on the desired stats so that, that way the character is more accessible to newer or intermediate players. If you can get a faster Lethe and one with more health, I highly recommend you do so. Critical hit chance and damage, we're going to just skip over because again, Call of the Abyss cannot land a critical strike. There's no reason for us to invest in these stats. Effectiveness is 18%, which is our starting effectiveness, and no effect resistance. Taking a look at the right side, Necklace and Ring are going to both be HP percentage, not only for the bulk, but the bonus damage on Call of the Abyss. Boots are going to be speed, so we can take turns in a timely fashion, although there might be some wiggle room for you to actually use HP percentage boots if you're on the speed set, if you have really high per piece average speed, including the boots. Artifacts here is going to be Prayer of Solitude. However, there are a few other options you could consider. I think Prayer of Solitude is basically the only really good option on this character, but if for some reason you didn't pull it, Proof of Valor could be a decent option, as can Music Box if you have that laying around from one of the Christmas events because it's just generically good on any character that has a high amount of speed because you'll be cycling turns quickly and therefore providing your team with more boss. But you really, really want Prayer of Solitude. Looking at the per piece average, it is 14% defense, 25% health, 7 speed, and then you'll see flat health here. You really want flat health on a lot of your pieces, especially your necklaces and your rings that already have HP percentage main stats in order to get that per piece average down. Almost every build that we're going to talk about after that standard variation is pretty much just a small tweak to that same build. Because again, Lethe doesn't really have too many options for how you can actually play her. This next one I'm going to talk about is if you want to have some kind of effectiveness or possibly even ER on the character. You'd want to go some amount of effectiveness so that that way you have a better chance of landing frostbite on specific characters. And you might want to go some effect resistance, about 100 or so, if you want her to resist defense breaks from characters like, say, Alencia or maybe even resist or provoke from a character like Senya. Taking a look at our primary sets, I have speed hit here if you decide to go for effectiveness or speed resist if you decide to go for some effect resistance. Desired HP is still, again, not factoring in that artifact bonus. Desired stats here, you'll notice, are almost exactly the same except for the effectiveness and effect resistance here. About 100 effectiveness should do it. Anywhere from around 85 to 100, I think, is fine for most players if you are trying to actually land that Frostbite debuff, give yourself a little bit of... Uh, of an edge on certain characters that might have a little bit of ER actually built in. As for effect resistance, I have 0 to 150% listed here. The 100% breakpoint is probably where you're going to want to be, 85 to 100. This is where you find most bruisers that kind of have a little bit of ER, like Icarina, for example. That can absolutely work here for Lethe. If you're really worried about the Alencia matchup, try to shoot for like 150, assuming it doesn't impact your stats too much, because most Alencias don't really build any effectiveness to begin with, but Mind's Eye gives 50%, so therefore 150% means that you don't really have to worry too much about actually getting defense broken. I wouldn't go that high if it impacts your stats too much a little over a hundred percent like maybe a 100 percent to 120 percent is probably going to be fine most of the time again we don't really want to lose too much defense hp or speed if we can help it but if that is what you are looking for for a range that's probably where you're going to want to end up being Taking a look at the right side pieces here, HP percentage necklace again, and then for ring I have HP percentage, although you could go effectiveness or effect resistance. If you decide to go for the effectiveness or ER ring, you're going to need to have an absolute metric ton of health on said ring along with a bunch of extra flat health on the ring and necklace because you're pretty much going to need it. If you look over at the percentage stat needed column, we're already at 102.8% with the HP necklace and the HP percentage ring. Usually, I try not to go over 100% in any particular category in the percentage stats needed because then it starts to be very high the amount of stats that you need per piece in that one specific area. So if you decide to sacrifice the HP ring for the effectiveness or effect resistance, you're going to be looking at like 25 plus per piece average on a lot of pieces, probably around 30% health per piece average or even more. 
Uh, so yeah, that's why we didn't go for that. Boots is still speed, but again, you could go for HP percentage depending on your specific gear and subs. That is a possibility. Taking a look at the artifacts here, Prey of Solitude, still the best one. But if you decide to go for an effectiveness slant, I would not fault you for trying out Champion's Trophy for the chance to stun on Wave Slash, as well as the Circus Fantasia, which is Mui's artifact for the enhanced first turn effectiveness if you're really looking to try to land that Frostbite, land that Restrict, and strip those buffs. Looking at our per piece average, it's exactly the same as the standard variation. For the most part, 14% defense, 25% health, and 7 speed. If you have the spat stats to spare, which is pretty much what you're doing here anyway, you're kind of sprucing up the effectiveness or effect resistance if you're looking for it. You're going to be looking for about 14% effectiveness per piece. And the ER, depending on where you want to go, is going to be anywhere from around 17% ER if you're looking for the 100%. And if you're looking to go for the full 150%, then it's going to be about 25% per piece average. The last deviation to talk about for the standard variation is to use a much faster Lethe to play her as a bridge or possibly even an opener. The main reason to play this Lethe is to lean in to the Frostbite that is on her S3 freeze down. If you are not able to actually follow up the free soul burn for Lethe's first turn where she provides frostbite for your team with some kind of uh, very fast single target assassin or possibly a very hard hitting AOE DPS, I highly recommend you stick to the standard variation. This is simply so that that way, if you have turn one, you get frostbite and you kill a key target or wipe the enemy team out immediately before it gets cleansed from a character like Ocean Breeze Lulica or Mediator Quaric. If you cannot do that, you cannot guarantee that, I'd probably skip this build in favor of the two variations that we talked about previously. Taking a look at our primary sets, Speed Any is the name of the game. You're trying to go as fast as possible. So Speed Broken Set is probably going to be what you're going to play most of the time. But you can still play Health, Defense, Hit, Resist, or Immunity. Taking a look at the desired stats, Attack is still the same. Defense and Health are a little bit lower here at 1,200 Defense and 22k HP respectively. We've essentially knocked down our bulk stats in order to jump our average per piece average here on Speed quite a bit higher. 260 is the slowest that I have seen Lethe played for this uh, actual function. 295 or so is the fastest I have seen it played. How fast it needs to be, that depends entirely on you and how you have your character's gear. If your really fast DPS, your really hard hitting DPS is around 250 speed, then you're going to need about a 260 speed Lethe. If most of your aggressive DPS are 260, you need a 270 Lethe. If they're around 270, you need a 280 Lethe, so on and so forth. So again, your mileage may vary. We can't crit, so that's still base, and we don't really need uh, effectiveness or effect resistance. If you wanted to squeak in some effectiveness, you could, but... Uh, I don't know if it's going to come at the expense of speed. That, again, depends entirely on your gear. Taking a look at the right side here, we have HP percentage necklace and HP percentage ring. And, of course, we're trying to go as fast as possible, so boots are speed. Artifact is still Prayer of Solitude, but if you don't have it, I guess Champion's Trophy and Circus Fantasia could also work here because it kind of gives you an extra chance at landing Frostbite or potentially even a stun. Looking at the per piece average here, we have 9% defense, 18% health, 13 speed per piece average minimum. Again, your mileage may vary. It might need to go quite a bit higher depending on how fast you actually want Lethe to be. And then, of course, flat health on your things like necklaces and rings. As always, let's round out the video with some matchup knowledge. If you recall from the skill section, Call of the Abyss most likely will hit you for around somewhere between 18 to 20,000 damage. This makes it pretty clear where you want to use Lethe. You want to be playing her against heroes that typically have less than 18 to 20,000 HP. And in case you haven't noticed, that's a fairly large portion of the cast. A lot of counterpick bruisers fall into this category, and they don't really have too much that they can do to threaten Lethe. So she's an excellent pick against characters like Lionheart Sermia, Ikarina, or Edward Elric. The Frostbite on Freeze Over also allows you to get around mid-speed units that have built-in damage reduction, such as Sylvan Sage Vivian, which was shown in Lethe's preview video. She's also fairly good into dodge units like Savior Auden, since Omen doesn't care if she lands a hit or not. The base damage is so high on Call of the Abyss, and dodge units have such low effective HP, that even on a miss, she's probably going to outright kill that unit. 
Just be aware that most dodge units have big burst potential, and depending on your team comp, they can definitely hyper-focus down Lethe. When it comes to bad matchups, there's basically three things you have to look out for. The first of which is injury characters. Since Lethe scales off of max HP, I think this one's fairly obvious. An injured Lethe is a sad Lethe, and she doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot for you. Characters like Alencia with her defense break and injury combo, or Death Dealer Ray with his combination of Venom and Sleep are particularly bad for Lethe. Speaking of Sleep, Control is another thing that Lethe doesn't handle particularly well. Depending on your speed, characters like Solitary of the Snow and Peyra can keep you locked down, and if Lethe doesn't have her speed buff, the character falls incredibly flat most of the time. Lethe also doesn't have the best tools to access these characters out of stealth or punish them too well as Freeze Over isn't really a true buff to spell. Lastly, Cleave. Lethe needs to get at least two turns to offer your team the most amount of value. A character like Ran is significantly faster than Lethe and can also set up some very aggressive plays. These can usually make short work of Lethe and her team. Straze is another character to be aware of. Due to Prayer of Solitude, there's an incredibly high chance that Lethe is the highest HP hero on your team, which makes her prime pickings for his S3, Star Extinction. And hyper-aggressive teams built to allow this man to get a turn will likely spell doom for our busty beauty. So let's talk about some partners to pair with Lethe. Protecting her so she can do her job is a pretty good starting point. And for protection, I highly recommend a standard mitigation knight such as Unbound Knight Arowell. You can also choose an immunity granting knight such as Crimson Armin or Last Rider Crow if you're afraid of her getting debuffed. Speaking of getting debuffed, Cleansers. The two most obvious choices in the current meta as of the recording of this video are going to be Mediator Quaric as well as Ocean Breeze Lulica. Both characters provide cleansing and utility to help your team keep up the tempo in a match. This leads to potentially getting off more Call of the Abyss triggers thanks to the combat readiness pushing that is on both characters' skill 1s. Lastly, DPS partners that operate on a completely different attack axis than Lethe. You don't want to bring Lethe with DPS that are weak to the same types of units that she's weak to, such as Injury or Control. She excels when paired alongside characters like Solitary of the Snow or Landy. If you think about it, these two make really good pairings with Lethe. The counters to Solitaria are commonly heroes like Edward Elric or Lionheart Sermia, and Lethe destroys both of those characters pretty easily. And most of the counters that people are going to bring into a Guiding Light based Landy are typically things like Milam, Charlotte, or Researcher Carrot. None of these characters pose an actual threat to Lethe. And that's going to do it for how to play Lethe. This character is still fairly new as of the recording of this video, so there's a chance that I did miss something. And if I did, let me know down in the comments below. If you're watching this video after its original air date and something was found, I will pin any changes to the top comment of this video. If you want to see more how to play guides in the same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye now.